Yo, what's good, YouTube? This is Dominique, aka Mr. Kid Thunder 2. So, this is probably going to be, if not my last, the second to last vlog or video before I actually leave for basic. I know I've been trying to vlog and keep up with it, but of course, I don't have that many videos. But this video is basically, basically going to be about the Army OCS application process and um, my experiences with it and what you have to have and what you got to do and things like that. So, I'm going to be looking down at my notes. That I have down here that's why you're gonna see me look down and that's how I'm gonna draw um, what I'm gonna say so anyway uh, so basically first thing you got to do to apply for OCS for Army OCS as a civilian applicant so I'm this is not a video that's gonna be if you're actually already in service because there are many forms many I'm not gonna say there are many other forms but there are it's like a different process you got to get like this form called DA form 60 and DA 61 from your chain of command and um, there's other miscellaneous forms that I don't know about. I'm only going to speak from an 09S perspective. Um, and that's as, as a civilian applicant applying to OCS. So um, first thing you have to do is you have to be within a year of graduating college or having graduated college to apply for OCS. Um, certain recruiters will tell you that, hey, you actually need to have graduated or or some, something other than that, but that hasn't been released in a Milper message or anything close to that. Milper messages are messages released by the Army dealing with military personnel. Milper military personnel, these things deal with um, things like applying. They can deal with applying to OCS, they can deal with things that deal with certain branches or uh, miscellaneous stuff like that. But just for what I'm talking about, these Milper messages actually deal with things that deal with the OCS application process like these will come out and these will update and these will say different things like different waivers aren't approved different things will automatically DQ you from applying such and so forth so to apply like I said you have to be within a year of graduating college uh, to actually apply for OCS or having graduated college some will lie to you but that's all you need to sit for the board um, you need to be between the ages of 19 and 32 you need to be eligible for uh, for a secret security clearance. All officers go through a security clearance thing. So you have to have a pretty clean background. You can't have a whole bunch of crazy stuff. Um, you must not have any more than six years of active federal service before arriving for OCS. Yeah. Um, you must have at least a four-year degree. Now, about that degree thing, um, you need a bachelor's of science is more selective or it's more competitive than a bachelor's of art um, they don't really get into detail like they look at your at your degree to the point to where is it stem or is it not stem uh, they really want stem majors they really want engineering degrees um, because they i guess it shows you're more smart and everybody can get a bachelor's of art degree uh, i think it was in 2009 i think i was reading where um, they were taking like everybody. But as of 2016, they are selective. Now, it could get less selective, it could get more selective in the future. That's just at the state it is right now. Um, okay, so actually for the ap actual application process, I'm gonna say this one in the beginning. Uh, this one thing, you need to have a list of your branch selections. And this is the first thing I'm going to say. It's not the most important thing. I probably should say it at the end, but I'm going to say it right now because uh, or else I'd forget it. Um, so you're going to need a list of your branch selections and top priority from 1 to, I think, 10 is what I did. Um, and for me, my top branches were Cyber, Signal, and AG. Um, those are the branches that I want. Um, the most selective ones are usually Combat Arms, Armor, Infantry, um, MI is really, really competitive, um, and things like that. Combat arms stuff and really like technical, not really technical stuff, but MI. Combat arms and MI are field artillery, armor, MI, military intelligence. That stuff is like everybody wants it. So be prepared to fight for it. So that's just, I want to say that in the beginning because I'm going to forget if I don't say that. So um, first thing that's really important is you need a photograph of yourself with a suit on so they know how you look in a suit to present to the board. Um, second thing that's important is you're going to need letters of recommendation. My letters of recommendation were from two officers, a major in the Army in 04, and then a lieutenant commander in the Navy in 04, and then also a, um, my teacher. 
my teacher in school. Um, they generally ask for you to have a letter of recognition from high-ranking people, you know, people of some substance that can vouch for your morals, personality, and things like that. Character. Character. Uh, people that can vouch for your character. Uh, next thing that's going to be in there is uh, you're going to need your waivers. So my application process, it took me 11 months from walking into a recruiting office to getting picked up. It took me 11 months. It doesn't usually take people 11 months unless you need a waiver for something. If you've ever been to the doctor, you're probably gonna need a waiver. Um, if you have eczema, that's an automatic DQ, um, you need a waiver for it. If you, I see what happened for me is I broke my ankle and I, they thought I had eczema. I actually just have a dry patch of skin on my chest. But um, I broke my ankle um, a while back, so I had to get approved for that. They had to make sure it was okay. That in itself took two to three months to do. You know, um, that's why it was so important. You have to get a waiver for asthma. You got to get a waiver for certain um, prescriptions in your eyes. You need a waiver for like almost a lot of stuff, unless you're absolutely perfect and never been to doctor for stuff. Waivers can take up a lot of the time. Um, because you have to take different trips up to MEPS, and from MEPS, you have to, they have to send you out to your consults. Then you got to get the results from your consults, and those results have to be sent to uh, USAREC. USAREC has to approve it. It's just a long, daunting process. So anyway, that also has to be in your, um, in your packet. Um, you have to be, right now, as of the MILPR messages that are released right now, I think the, the age limit is 32 to apply for Army OCS. The, uh, 30, 32 active, 34 um, reserves. Um, you can't have more than 10 years in service if you are going active. You cannot have more than 10 years of service if you are going active. Um, they, they also are talking about offenses and things like that. Uh, that's another waiver thing, you know, that's, you can't have, those are moral waivers, and you, I don't know anyone that got approved with uh, criminal offenses. I have one, two, three, four speeding tickets, and they looked all the way back to 2009, when I first got my license. Um, I had two in 2015 and two in one in 2009 and one in 2010. Um, so you can't have anything crazy. I got speeding tickets and I still got picked up, so I'm okay. So you're just kind of trying to keep it kind of low. Um, next thing is you need all copies of every college you've been to. There was a college I went to and I only took one class, organic chemistry, and they still wanted that transcript. And that was just one class. So you have to have everything there. They won't take it if there are any blocks or gaps or anything. So I altogether I went to three colleges in four years. Um, ACT or SAT results, um, I think that depends on what's going on. In the last Milper message that, well for my packet I didn't need my ACT or SAT results. Uh, I believe that's only, I think that's only when you're going through the process and you haven't actually already graduated college. What I did is I submitted my actual diplomas with my packet. So they didn't need my ACT or SAT results. But yeah, again, you still need all your college transcripts. You need... Um, Two PT tests, um, so a PT test usually, not usually, as of right now, um, not including any OPAT or PFAs, PFA is a, a physical fitness assessment, which is half of the PT test, and an OPAT is occupational physical assessment test, that has to deal with a specific job. Um, as of right now, for the PT test, you need to do a two mile run, two minutes of push ups, two minutes of sit ups. You need to take the ASVAB. Um, I know that's usually only for enlisted backgrounds, but they're just looking at your GT score for OCS. 
and you need to be you have proof of citizenship, a birth certificate, social security card, qualifying physical, body weight, any body fat, if your body composition is too heavy, and that's about it. If anybody has any questions or wants to comment on anything I've said, just, you know, like you usually do, just hit me up in the comments. And uh, take it easy. Give them a two, Dominique, come out. Peace.